Roberts over here on the East Coast. I'm based out of Four Oaks, North Carolina. Uh, we cover both Carolinas, Virginia up into Maryland and Delaware. Um, I also uh, have, am relatively new with Winfield United, only been with the company about three and a half years. Before that, I worked for many years in Georgia and uh, then moved up here to take this position as a, just a point of trivia, not that I had, had posted these questions, but what is the peach state? As some of y'all are probably very aware, it's Georgia. Uh, but what a lot of people don't realize is there are more peaches in one county in South Carolina than the entire state of Georgia. And so with that, when, when I took this role with Winfield United, we had, a, we had a seller down there in that county working with a lot of that industry. And, uh, you know, we were, we were uh, preaching an interlock and master lock and row crops, corn, soybeans, even cotton over here. And, you know, the question was posed, um, to to what do, what would happen if we use these drift reduction adjuvants in orchard settings? Just like uh, I think that Christy and Ryan have teed this up very well uh, for this talk, talking about AccuDrop or talking about spreader stickers or, or high volume uh, air blast sprayers. And so we we decided we would do this work. Uh, and as it turns out, as, as I began to dig, uh, Christy, as well as a couple other agronomists in the company, had already done a, a lot of work with air blast sprayers and was seeing some success with that. So uh, I credit her with, with helping with this project and, you know, offering some advice and some feedback where we could. But what we had decided to do uh, was some of the challenges that we had had with spray cards, we said, well, let's let's go ahead and see if we can get some money and do this at Clemson. You know, we were put in touch with a, a horticulturist there and a plant pathologist and just said, let's get some help from them. We can get some statistics run and let's just see if we can generate uh, some data that would support this business. Because as most of y'all know, and especially those of you that use, uh, whether it's nut crops or fruit crops or whatever, uh, they're generally high value. Um, and over here in the southeast, where we've got a lot of humidity, a lot of hurricanes in the late summers, early fall, uh, you know that, that diseases are a problem. So even though there's a lot less acreage than, say, on a corn farm, you're, you're still going to spray those acres a bunch of times before you harvest them. So we began to look at this. And just let me see if I can uh, see to so control you. If I Let's see, is there a way to advance? Okay. So we developed a protocol that said, hey, our objective here is to determine if, if our drift reduction technologies, and we wanted to look at several of them, interlock, master lock, AccuDrop, uh, could, we, could we measure spray deposition in tree canopies? And also could we measure post-harvest uh, issues it, 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 when, when we went in there to harvest the fruit. And the real problem in South Carolina that brought on this research trial was a, an issue in peaches called bronzing or inking. And it's one of those, I think in a lot of crops, you'll have a physiological disorder. You don't really know what causes it. So you guess, hey, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the heavy metals and the fungicide sprays. Maybe it's some other environmental factor. You know, not every year do we see inking or bronzing in peaches. And one thing that had really concerned our seller was the fact that, hey, you know, when they're spraying fungicides, even insecticides, once the fruit is on the tree, they will take adjuvants out of the tank because part of their fear is, is that the oil-based adjuvant or or something in that adjuvant is, is contributing to inking or, or bronzing. So part of what we want to do as well with this project is collect data on that. Because uh, sometimes in research, you know that finding out something doesn't affect is just as important as finding out something that does affect another factor. So we want to just make sure that use of, of adjuvants uh, was not contributing to inking or bronzing. So that's, that's really what we began to look at. Uh, we had, uh, it was a little bit of, I wouldn't say a complicated study, but there were several moving parts there. Um, what we decided to do is prior to harvest, 
really only one time with spray deposition, we went in there with Captan at a 2X rate. And Captan is, is an old chemistry, as y'all know, it's still used in peaches. Uh, there are newer chemistries coming that I think are better, but we did have an idea that, hey, you know, Captan can be hard on the trees. If we're gonna create an inking or a bronzing situation, let's use Captan and see if that won't exacerbate that. So we're trying to create an environment where that would work. Spray deposition, uh, those of you familiar with Winfield United, you know that we love our Syngenta spray cards. Uh, we're gonna use the spray table. We're gonna demo those spray cards every chance we get uh, because a lot of our drift reduction products, they do work very well. And so we wanted to collect that data. Uh, we were gonna collect the spray cards, send them to the lab. Uh, you just use a, a simple Epsom scanner uh, to determine percent coverage where you could scan those cards and, and it would spit out percent coverage of the droplets on those cards. A third thing we wanted to look at was drift analysis. And, and this was, a will talk about this here in just a minute. A drift analysis was something that Clemson sort of figured out that really in a way gave us some of the most useful data in this study. Uh, and they took polyurethane uh, mesh screens. I'll show you that here in just a minute. They used a fluorescent orange dye, which you can see there on your slide. Uh, and I'll show you kind of the novel way that they they use those screens and then they analyze that dye. Lastly, uh, we wanted to collect post-harvest data. We wanted to look at inking and bronzing. Uh, we ended up looking at a, a brown rot. We had some interesting data come up on brown rot. And as you see here at the bottom, the table is really the treatments that we use. Now, whenever we give our chemicals to a university, oftentimes we will use the experimental designation so all of these products were commercialized, but we use those designations just, uh, you know, to sometimes to keep things a little bit confidential when you go on the university for the first time. Uh, the transfix at the bottom, you see the AG09075. Um, Ryan has talked about this. Uh, Christy has already brought this up. This is not a new chemistry, but we threw that in there sort of as a check just to say, hey, you know, uh, let's throw a spreader sticker in there, just a, you know, a, a pinene based one. Let's see what we get. I know that over on the West Coast, you guys use complex. Complex is a similar type of, of spreader sticker, but it's not, it's not pinene based. It's probably a little easier to work with if I had to guess. But this was a new product for me. Again, when I came to work for uh, Winfield, I, the adjuvant business was not something I had ever worked in. So we threw transfix in there just as a check. And the check, of course, was the cap tan spray with no uh, adjuvant in there or drift reduction technology at all. So some of you guys maybe have done this before uh, with different materials. We, we sure enough, we took those gator clips and we, uh, we put two spray cards. In 2018, we used two spray cards per position. In 2019, we added a third spray card so that you can see the tree on the right hand side, you know, we had the left side of the tree, uh, we had the back of the tree, the front, uh, the right side, and then down at the trunk. And as some of you know that, that have had exposure to peaches or maybe you grow them yourselves, you know, we pruned peaches and, and what you can see there is an open vase structure. So the tree never gets that tall, but we like to keep that, uh, that middle part open and the branches out. Um, you'll also see kind of down at the bottom there, I'll have some other pictures of this in a minute, but in the bottom left, those are, that is the, the methodology that Clemson came up with to measure uh, drift analysis. They built those, that scaffolding system with those frames about a foot by a foot at three different heights, a sort of belt buckle height, head height, and, and at the top of the tree canopy. And then they put three of those, one in the middle of the canopy, one on the right side, one on the left. And those were behind the trees. As you can see in that picture at the, at the very, very, very bottom left, the, the sprayer actually was on the other side of the tree. So its purpose, all those little, those little mesh screens purpose was to collect the spray that never deposited on the tree and was being blown into the other row middle. So, what they did was, was uh, that dye was put in every single 
uh, spray tank the day that we did the spraying. And so what it did, what those mesh screens did, as you can imagine, they're going to catch those droplets. You're going to take that mesh screen back to the lab, uh, wash it with distilled water, and then what washes into a cup or a small container, you can analyze that in the lab to see what is your percentage of dye that you've captured. And again, the less dye that you capture, the more of that spray is caught in the canopy of the tree, the more a dye that you capture, that means more of that spray is, is not being caught by the tree and it's being thrown out past the, past the tree canopy. Again, one thing I think we always have, most of the data I've ever seen with Winfield United and orchards that have spray cards, there's differing levels of success that we have with that. Uh, sometimes we have a good success collecting spray, but when you're throwing 80 to 100 gallons of water at a tree and in a peach orchard, you've got about 100 trees per acre. So that's about a gallon of water uh, per tree. You're throwing a lot of droplets into, the, into that canopy. Uh, this is, I'll see if I can get this video to play. Again, some of you that work with air blast sprayers, you've seen it. And again, that sprayer for this project, it was, it was uh, putting out 100 gallons to the acre uh, at 100 PSI with ceramic tips. And if you noticed at the beginning of the video on the other side of the tree row is where that, uh, that those mesh screens and those stacks. Now that's another video basically shows the same thing. I'll see if we can get past that. Okay, so when we had finished with the spray card analysis, again, we're, we're trying to measure percent coverage, drift deposition, we're trying to measure it two different ways. Uh, with the spray card analysis, this is what we get. You know, we were able to produce charts for the back of, of the canopy, the front, the trunk of the tree, the right side, the left side. And just to keep from straining your eyes, basically what all of these say is that we really could not pick up specific trends with using spray card analysis, not in 2018, and again, not even in 2019. You know, you can, the, the red is the front of the canopy, the yellow is the back, the left is the green, the gray is the right, and the green is the trunk. And based on treatment, you could never really, we couldn't tease out a lot of, we couldn't make a, a lot of sense of the madness here. So when we had outliers and then we even said, well, let's take out the outliers. We collected three cards per tree. What if we took out the card that just wasn't fitting the data? Does that help much? And indeed it did not. So what that's got us thinking is in the future, if we are to do work with air blast sprayers and large orchards, is spray card analysis the best way to do it? And for the two years we did it, no, it was not. But if you go back and you look at the method that Clemson was using, again, you can see that scaffolding system. This made a lot more sense to just capture what goes past the tree canopy. So now when you do that, we can now generate some data that makes sense. And here is, is, is really where the story to me is interesting. If you look at 2018 data, right over the top of 2019 data, they look pretty much identical. Captan with no adjuvant whatsoever. Uh, it's collecting a lot of that dye that goes right past the canopy. It's drifting. It's, it's um, as we would say, it's drifting. It's uh, not getting the target. It's not penetrating into the canopy of that tree. Uh, we can even look over here at, at AG09075. That's with the transfix it more or less is, is doing about the same thing that the, uh, uh, that the cap tan is doing by itself. The story here that I think is interesting though, but let me go back here, is all three of our drift reduction adjuvants. 
You know, if you look at, at AccuDrop, Interlock, and MasterLock, they all appear to be doing a very significant job reducing uh, spray drift past the tree canopy. So to me, this is a this may be a better way in the future if we want to look at this stuff in the field, a better way to do it. It's not that hard to do. It just kind of was a novel way of looking at it and, and making it happen. So if you look there, the two I really want to concentrate on is AccuDrop, the second from the left, and MasterLock, the second from the right. Interlock did a great job itself, but it just seemed like both years the, the, the best we got was with MasterLock and AccuDrop as far as managing our drift past the tree canopy. And we had a second phase of this study. And in the second phase, we wanted to, we wanted to go to the hydrocooler. So we, we had a protocol in another orchard that followed the same treatments I just showed you. Um, but we came in prior to harvest on two occasions and we sprayed, uh, we sprayed each treatment to run off to where the spray was running off the leaves. Uh, we came in at, at one or two separate times. We collected the harvest. Uh, we took those and we went to the hydrocoolers. And if you look in these two pictures, you can see where we're mimicking uh, these black tubs or we're using an ice water bath. Uh, we're using chlorine dioxide. A lot of y'all know you're going to use that in a lot of your water baths with, with fruit production to uh, hopefully get rid of any pathogens, get rid of any leftover uh, problems that you may have going into a post-harvest storage situation. So 0.6 parts per million of chlorine dioxide, and we let them sit there for 45 minutes. Um, Dr. Juan Carlos Melgar, he's kneeling there uh, measuring out the chlorine dioxide uh, to the right of that picture. Uh, Dr. Guido Schnabel, he's, he was the pathologist. He's in the red t-shirt standing up there. And both of them were very involved in this. So we took 50 fruit per treatment. Uh, if you look at the right picture, you can see one grad student or one student worker. Uh, he's taking 25 fruit and putting in one tray. And then the other empty trays, they're going to get 25 more fruit. And here's where we segregated the fruit. We put one of those trays for each treatment in regular air conditioned room, room temperature for the summertime. We took the other trays straight to those hydrocoolers that are behind everybody there in that picture. And basically they stayed in the uh, room temperature room for about a week. Uh, they were analyzed at four days and then at eight days for brown rot. Got some interesting things to show you there. Uh, and then the ones that went in the hydrocooler went there for about a week. And then we took them out and we wanted to analyze them for inking and bronzing. So here, if you look at table one, and you can see a little bit of, of how we got one of our questions answered. You know, we wanted to ask the question, did our drift reduction technology adjuvants, did transfix exacerbate inking or bronzing? Because in 2018, we had a very good incidence of both inking and bronzing. We, we felt like we'd better gain as much information from that as we can. And you can see when you run statistics, we ran a Tukey test on, on this part of the study. Um, I took statistics about 20 years ago. I vaguely remember doing that in class. I have no idea how it was looked, but you can do a mean separation with your A's and your B's and your letters there. So there's no significant difference there in inking, severity, or incidence with any of those treatments compared to the CAPTAM. In my view, that's a good thing. You're able to demonstrate that use of spray adjuvants with fungicides in this situation did not worsen the problem. We saw something very interesting though with bronzing incidence and bronzing severity. And if you look, you can see that, that bronzing was not made worse either, but the only treatments different from CAPTAN only was transfix, a spreader sticker. You look at bronzing percentage and bronzing severity. And if I had to guess, I would say this this would probably correspond if our spreader sticker of choice had been complex. Uh, but this really excited the, the, the two professors there at Clemson. And, and one reason for this is I think we have a challenge in our industry sometimes. You know, if you look at adjuvant research, Winfield United does it as state of the art. 
but there's just not the money in adjuvant research or the excitement in it is a lot of these, the pathologists, the entomologists, the weed scientists, as much research resources as they get from doing projects with, with new AIs or with new methods of spraying or application. You know, but, but for these two professors, this really interested them because what it showed me is that, that sometimes in the, in the world of university research, maybe even state research where adjuvants aren't being looked at, not even the, the professors understand their value. And demonstrating something to them like this really was a, a positive for us uh, to be able to have other conversations with them the next year or two about other adjuvants and their uses and, and what direction to go with this trial on year number two. So Transfix is showing us something here. Now for brown rot data, I did have something I wanted to show you there. If you recall brown rot data, we, when we kept the fruit at room temperature on day four and day eight, we went in there, we evaluated for brown rot. We wanted to see what we got. So just to give you a little bit of a, of a background as, as far as what is at stake here, is we look at, at, at trees per acre. Um, you're gonna lose some of those trees every year to disease, uh, various problems like that, physical injury, something along those lines. But we can factor that in an acre, I'd said, you know, on the university uh, fruit farm there, there, they had 100 trees the acre. Let's factor that, that in a commercial orchard, you're going to have 135 trees the acre. And in a good year, we're going to harvest fruit off 95 of them. Okay, average yield marketable fruit per tree. If we have, if 80% of those fruit pack out, uh, peaches are, are packed in half bushel boxes. So you're going to get about six of those boxes per tree. In an average year, $12 per box. You can see that the, uh, the value per acre here is, is 6400 uh, $6,840. Okay, why am I showing you this? Uh, a cost of one master lock spray at 10 ounces, about $5.95 an acre. A cost of one transfix spray, six ounces, is $3.75. If you were combining them both, that's $9.70 per acre, but let's just say we keep them separate. Well, let's look at our brown rot data. So in 2018, where we collected it, we looked at brown rot percentage at four days of, in storage. If you look at that column to the left there, four days after storage, we have no brown rot. Four days later, eight days after storage, we do have brown rot. And even though these aren't significant, you can see that with no brown rot, you're making $6,840 uh, per acre. We had 5% brown rot in Captan. We had 2% and 1% where we added spray adjuvants. And you can look at the column right there on the very right and tell that, hey, even though these results aren't statistically significant, that's real money that a grower could be leaving in the field by not using the proper adjuvant with his fungicide spray. In year two in 2019, I'm just gonna go through this. I know our time is getting a little bit short, but. Uh, Clemson did some further work on this and, and they involved us in that and they wanted to look at bronzing again, year two of this study. Uh, again, bronzing, you know, they're wondering, is it, uh, is it heavy metal related with fungicides? Is it environmental related? Is it physical injury uh, during the cooling process, after the cooling process? Uh, they even suspect maybe early season thrips are causing damage. Um, I don't know if you guys have thrips over your way, but thrips are a very big problem for us, particularly uh, that feed there in the growing tips and in the blooms of the fruit. Uh, so we're just kind of looking at everything. Nutrient imbalances, you know. Uh, Dr. Melgar is looking at potassium in, in orchards to see if that might affect it. Uh, Moving on, just to, just to wrap up and show you a little bit when they rate bronzing on peach fruit, a, a zero rating would be a, a beautiful fruit, no, no physical scarring whatsoever. A one would be less than 5% scarring on the fruit. A two is a 5% to 25%. 
you can see that a three is, is up to 50% scarring and, and a four is anything over 50% of that fruit scarring. And those of you that grow uh, fruit or, or nut crops, you know that, that this can be devastating. Uh, has, you know, in, in our markets in the U.S. has no real effect on how you can use that fruit, but just for aesthetics alone, you're going to lose out there. Lastly, just to, just to wrap up, if looking at what they did in year two with us, um, they had no cap tan treatments. Uh, they had bronzing incidents on the y-axis there from zero to close to 60% incidents uh, this uh, two seasons ago. Uh, when no cap tan was used, we did see that they were able, in this case, they were able to exacerbate a bronzing to some degree with cap tan sprays. And you'll even see right in the middle of that graph, they sprayed one treatment of cap tan at a 3x rate. Uh, when they added the AG09075, that's transfix uh, to remind you, uh, they sprayed with cat tan and transfix. They were able to significantly uh, reduce bronzing on those peach fruits. So uh, we got, have, have gained a lot of mileage from this study. Um, again, we are beginning to, to kind of help people see uh, that adjuvants do matter. Uh, even pushing the, the, the window late into the season into fungicide sprays. Uh, this past season, we had a lot of success going to a couple of large growers uh, in uh, Johnston, South Carolina, and, and getting those operations to adopt Transfix. Uh, I really wanted to get AccuDrop in the tank with that. Uh, we're thinking next year what we may perhaps do is, is use Transfix uh, every other spray early in the season late in the season, do definitely put AccuDrop in there when your foliage and your canopy is bigger, your foliage is thicker, and to get that spray uh, into there. Uh, just to let you know, we, we did do some uh, phytotoxicity work with AccuDrop, with Complex, uh, with Transfix, with MasterLock. A, a, a Georgia research farm has given us data on that this season. We don't have that analyzed. It's not ready for today. Uh, but we ha we continue to get asked, well, what effect are, is all this going to have on, on the fruit at the end of the season? So hopefully we'll have more yield data this year. We'll actually have some phytotoxicity scores. Um, but in closing, the one thing I would just ask is, as you think about this type of research, and those of you that use air blast sprayers on your farm, where would be a logical step to go? If you knew that you could improve deposition, you knew that you could improve drift reduction, reduce drift more, keep more of that spray in the canopy. What would be a logical way to use this information? Not just for disease uh, reduction. I think the rabbit that I would really love to chase with this, with air blast sprayers is, can we reduce the total volume of water that growers have to haul around all over the place. You know, even if you could reduce that 10 to 20% um, because you're getting better deposition and, and adequate disease control, would that make a difference as far as costs, transporting water, paying to have that done? Uh, I don't know, it's something to think about, but I think that if we had another year or two to work with Clemson or if Christy took up this work over on the West Coast, I would love to see it where we began to look at these adjuvants in the tank at different uh, water volume application rates, 80 gallons per acre, 60, 100, and see are we making a difference even in reducing the complexity of that spray program. Uh, Christy and Jennifer, that's what I had. If, if we got we've got time i guess for a question or two yeah josh we'll go ahead if jen you can put the poll questions up there and i'll ask you a question, couple questions that come in while everyone's answering those questions and can listen so josh what are two key issues you think exist for air blast sprayer operations concerning drift and deposition of pesticide sprays for the future well, I think the main thing there is 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 what what I addressed just a second ago. I I would love to see, especially with with more and more pressure on growers to uh, 
to be good stewards, to manage resources. Uh, I, I would love to see us take this research and, and see if we can reduce total water volume that we have to use to adequately spray and control diseases in our orchards. Um, beyond that, I'm not really sure. Um, I would like to use some of our other drift reduction adjuvants. I would like to, uh, to go into the world of non-ionic surfactants, uh, spreader stickers, uh, organosilicones, and just see if we can even get a, a, a better spreading, a better deposition of that water droplet uh, to help control disease better. Okay, I got one more question for you, okay. and then we can go over the poll questions. So concerning what you know about the climate of the southern region of the United States and fruit orchard management, how important is disease management and why? Okay, so not knowing, I know most of the audience today is from either the Midwest or further to the West Coast, and I've often heard those environments are drier, but uh, it doesn't matter what we grow over here. Uh, I would say from East Texas all the way up into Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware, um, humidity and just our weather patterns with hurricanes are just, they, they really wreak havoc on being able to stay ahead of diseases, especially in high value crops. And just the cost of spraying, the cost of application, the number of times weekly or more than once a week that we have to protect our fruit, whether it's tomatoes, peppers, peaches, apples, whatever. Um, I just think that's a huge challenge for us over here. Josh, if you want to jump over and review the poll question. Number one is correct. Um, you know, again, just, just to reiterate, Master Lock did a similar thing that AccuDrop did. But at the end of the day, we sort of, we, you know, I even talked to Christy on this. We just sort of made a guess that if we were going to go live with this in, in 2020 to Growers Fields, that AccuDrop, if both things were equal, that AccuDrop being non-onyx or factant-based might give us a little wiggle room uh, and not, not causing some phytotechnology in the fields. Hopefully the data we had this year uh, from Georgia will confirm whether that's even a concern or not. So A is correct. And for two, uh, yeah, TransFix was, was really kind of the surprise of the two-year study. Uh, we just threw TransFix in there at the last minute as a check. We had no idea that it would be uh, so good at doing what it did. If I had it to do over again, knowing what I know now about complex, I probably would have put complex in transfix's place. <laughs> 